we're going to tell you the exact process. And we're teaming up with Beauty Within again to tell you guys the proper way of popping and draining a pimple without getting hyperpigmentation or scarring and redness afterwards. Hi everyone, it's Casper and I'm back with a new episode of Wish Trend TV vs Acne. If you haven't watched our last episode of Wish Trend TV vs Acne, then please click here. Also, we have another good news. Today, our new host, Luisa, is joining in with us, so say hi. Hello, Wish Trenders. My name is Luisa, and I'm originally from sunny California. Now, I live and work in Seoul, and I'm really excited to be here today to share some tips with you guys. So, let's go! So, you have a pimple. It's right there, staring at you, and you want to pop it so desperately, but you know that you're not supposed to. But you really want to! Sound familiar? The truth is, you really shouldn't be touching any blemishes or breakouts on your skin because you can very easily cause more scarring and even more problems by jabbing at it with your dirty fingers and spreading the bacteria around. But what if we told you there is one type you can safely pop at home? Today we're going to tell you the exact process and we're teaming up with Beauty Within again to tell you guys the proper way of popping and draining a pimple without getting hyperpigmentation or scarring and redness afterwards. We'll also share with you the products that we recommend you use on the area afterwards. Cause let's be real, no one wants to walk around with whiteheads, right? So make sure to go over to Beauty Within after this video to see some mistakes you might be making. But before we go into telling you guys the secret to how to properly pop and treat the blemish, let's quickly go over which types you can touch and also all the reasons why we're always told not to squeeze. Round 1. Are all blemishes and acne the same? So not all blemishes and acne are the same, but they do start for the same reason an inflamed hair follicle on the skin. Whiteheads are a type of small blemish that is common and also dries up pretty quickly. When it comes to whiteheads, a lot of people are actually very confused about what they are. Whiteheads are small blemishes caused by Propiani bacterium acnes or P. acnes bacteria. This type of breakout doesn't have much redness or pain when you touch it, unlike a popule, a pustule, or a cyst. When they form, the infection comes to the surface quickly and forms a white colored head with no or little redness. The pus pops easily and not much redness or pain should be felt. Whiteheads have a quick life cycle when it comes to types of breakouts. These are the only breakouts that you should consider touching if you have to. But don't get these confused with pustules and melia. These are definitely not to touch. Round 2. Why are we told not to squeeze? When you squeeze a breakout that's not just a whitehead, you're essentially pushing the insides in two directions, up and down. And actually, most of the buildup goes deeper into the skin when you're forcefully pushing down on it. Sure, a little of the pus may be let out, but the dead skin cells, the dirt and the oil and just bacteria all goes deeper down into the skin, making the pimple worse. So something that was just one inflamed pore has spread and potentially turned into multiple problems. Have you ever popped one and then like two more pop up next to it? Mm -hmm. This is the reason. And not just that, but when you pick out a pimple, you can cause scarring, even permanent ones. Round 3. Why do pimples hurt so much? Pimples and breakouts are painful in general on the surface and psychologically, right? But the reason for the physical pain is because the body recognizes the pimple, which is an inflammation, and is trying to get rid of the stuff that doesn't belong there. So it's the redness, inflammation, and swelling caused by the buildup of oils, dead skin, and bacteria that cause the pain. Your body sends white blood cells to try and fight the inflammation, which is what we see as pus. So if you try to pop that pimple, you actually reverse the progress the body has made and trying to get that build up out. Round 4. Proper acne extraction steps without leaving a scar. So now we've told you why you really shouldn't make a habit of touching and popping your pimples. So now we're going to show you the one and only time and the one and only pimple that you can touch. Pop it! Before going in, you first want to cleanse, exfoliate, and then apply a warm steam compress to warm your skin before starting. Starting with warm skin makes any extraction much easier and less prone to forceful scarring as your pores are opened, making it much easier. Wrap both your fingers in tissues and use Q-tips to gently squeeze either side of the whitehead. It should come out with ease with little to no pain. If you have to use any additional force or push down with resistance, and if it hurts, then it might actually be a pustule, so you should not squeeze it. Then, with anything that comes out, sweep over it gently with the clean end of a Q-tip. Some recommend using a sterilized needle to very gently prick the center so you don't break the skin. But just in case it's not a whitehead, we would recommend not using the needle unless you're very confident, because this might actually worsen your skin, especially if the needle isn't thoroughly disinfected. Ugh, bacteria. Reduce redness and 
cleanse. Unfortunately, the blemish isn't over after you pop it. How you care for the area afterwards will determine if you end up with scarring or cause more zits to arise in the area. Ice it! Wrap up an ice cube in tissue or a hand towel to reduce the redness that might have occurred on your skin. It shouldn't hurt and pressing on the area for 1-2 to two minutes should be enough to control the redness and the swelling of the area at bay. Use toner and serum. Immediately afterwards, you want to apply a toner and serum with anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties so that your wound doesn't have a chance to get infected. And this is super, super important. We suggest looking for toners with any of these ingredients, such as beta-glucan, hyaluronic acid, centella asiatica, aloe vera extract. We suggest looking for serum with any of these ingredients, such as hyaluronic acid, butylene glycol, betaine, and centella asiatica. This serum has a cooling effect which lowers the skin temperature by one Celsius, and this cooling effect could also help improve acne. The cool feeling remains until the end of absorption while lowering the temperature of the skin surface and moisturizing the dry skin deep inside. Mask. You can now also use a clay-based mask to soak up any excess oil or bacteria that's left inside or surrounding the area of the popped pimple. This mask contains clay content, bentonite, and kaolin, so it does not only soak up any excess oil and bacteria, but it's also good for pores. It is even better to use together with products that contain pore tightening ingredients. As for the skin that has been weakened by acne, it is important to strengthen skin barriers. To make the skin barriers tighter and stronger, we recommend vitamin E cream. The natural vitamin E ingredient moisturizes the skin and increases the absorption rate. The moist texture without stickiness and silky finish fill the surface of the skin with moisture. Prevention! Fight bacteria! At the end of your skincare routine, use pimple patches to conceal and cover the open wounds. To fight against bacteria, we recommend hydrocolloid patches that could shield the skin surface. This is a new product from Biwish Trend. This patch is made of hydrocolloid to protect the skin from external contamination of water, dust, and physical touch. The proper way to use this is to attach it on the dry skin surface after extracting acne with clean hands or cotton swabs and removing the fluid thoroughly. It is more effective when used at night. It will be launched on Wishtrend soon. It is a Wishtrend exclusive product and you can purchase it only on Wishtrend.com so stay tuned! Spot treatment and makeup. Never apply foundation or concealer to the area if your skin is broken and open. The risk of bacteria getting into the blemish is very high. If you're not into the acne patches, we recommend a gel type spot formula that will form a film on the open area. It'll make sure the skin is closed before applying any makeup. For spot treatment, we recommend products with the centella ingredient that prevents scars. It protects damaged areas and intensifies the skin barriers. It prevents acne scars, regenerates damaged skin cells by stimulating collagen synthesis, and shortens the recovery time. Waxing. Things like hair removal or waxing can cause the skin to purge into whiteheads. So after shaving or waxing anywhere on the body like legs or armpits, apply ice for 10 minutes and then apply a light layer of a skin calming cream. If you apply a thick layer of cream that contains the guayazoline ingredient, which is good for soothing skin, on the hair wax area before going to sleep, it reduces the irritation and helps to soothe and regenerate skin. So the winner is Wishtrend TV! Oh. Let's go on the road to clear skin with the tips we shared today. Our next episode is on Black Friday. Yay. Don't miss out and tune in on all the benefits and gifts we've prepared for you. So thank you guys for watching and remember you're beautiful just as you are. Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye.